Hey pilots, welcome to Harken Game Modes Part 3. Missile Assault, or MA for short, is one of the two so-called objective-based game modes in Harken. First of all, I would like to declare that everything I suggest in this video is purely based on my own personal experience and can in no way automatically guarantee your success in-game. Though, let's start with the stats. Missile Assault games are only played on 12-player servers. Private service accepted. And there is no time limit. Now each team has a base with 1500 health points. And your goal is to destroy the enemy base by capturing missile silos, which, who would have guessed, fire missiles at it. There are three silos on every map that can be captured by either team. And as long as you hold a silo, it constantly deals damage to the enemy base. You capture a silo for your team by positioning yourself inside of the marked area around it. The glowing borders will change colors according to their current state. By default, neutral silos have yellow borders, enemy silos have orange borders and friendly silos have light blue borders. Neutral silos are inactive and do not attack any base. Of course, standing in one spot isn't easy when people come and try to kill you all the time. And that's where the fun comes in, because you have to constantly fight the enemy team for every inch of ground, and that again leads to all kinds of tactical shenanigans being possible. Namely, infiltrator ambushes, predator traps, hellfire suppression, scouts swarming heavies and much more. I guess you already understand that I enjoy missile assault quite a lot. Now, since this is objective based, and win or loss, is determined by which base explodes first, your score and kill-death ratio are more or less irrelevant. Although if you destroy a lot of enemy mechs in order to capture their silos, you will of course have a good score and KDR. In that regard, the guidelines we learned in part 1 and 2 are still valid, as in dealing lots of damage to enemy mechs is never a bad thing, just like permanently watching your radar, supporting your teammates, staying alive as long as possible, and adapting your playstyle to the situation at hand. In fact, being able to adapt is probably the most important skill to possess here. Now, how do you win a match of missile assault? Primarily, stay within range of the silos you are trying to capture or defend, even during engagements. I've experienced way too many situations, neutralizing an enemy silo with a teammate at my side, but instead of repairing inside of the silo area, helping me capture it quicker, he would stand just one foot outside of it and press C. So theoretically you want to kill all the enemies and capture all three silos, it's simple as that. In practice though, and in well-balanced matches especially, this is almost never possible. Of course, if the opportunity arises, go for that triple cap, no holds barred. But generally you want to concentrate on capturing and holding two out of three silos, since two are easier to defend than three, and you don't necessarily need all three to win. The way to do that effectively is a different one for each map, but I'll go over that later. First up, team tactics. There are three archetypical strategies for capturing silos. I call them the death ball, the squad and the lone wolf. You already know the term death ball from team death matches and there isn't really any difference here. All six players of one team stick together closely and move from silo to silo as a whole. The advantage is of course that you can apply the maximum amount of pressure possible, likely crushing all attempts at resistance you may encounter. While on the downside you can only ever concentrate on one silo at a time this way. And while this is almost always the most viable strategy in TDM, you can easily be outplayed by the enemy team in missile assault if they keep spreading out to capture the other two silos, thus dealing more damage to your base. And the lone wolf strategy is exactly that. Single players taking care of themselves 
and only themselves, heading for an abandoned silo while everyone else is busy fighting each other. You take out single opponents, if you can, and make a run for it the instant you're outnumbered, focusing on the next, now empty silo. Squads are something in between. Small groups of either two or three pilots, giving each other cover, getting rid of lone wolves on the fly, but forced to retreat when stumbling upon a larger group of enemies. Now, you have to understand that in most cases you will not encounter any of those in their pure form in game, at least not throughout the entire match. The key to success is realizing which silo needs which treatment and reacting accordingly. If you are stationed at one silo with two friendlies and no threat is inside, but you see another teammate surrounded by red dots on the radar, maybe it's time to come for his aid. On the other hand, in some situations you might help your team more by going for an unobserved silo than by being part of the mob sweeping over one part of the map only. Also, the number of people capturing the silo actually affects the speed at which it is taken with one person being the slowest, and the more people, the quicker the capturing. Fellow YouTuber and Hawken pilot Hygienius has illustrated this very well in one of his hyperspeed Hawken informationals, which I thoroughly recommend checking out. Now, let's have a look at the maps. Out of the nine multiplayer maps in the game, seven are available for missile assault. There are no MA matches on Uptown and Prosk. Obviously, the strategy for each map is largely determined by where the silos are located. Let's start with Bunker. The missile silos on Bunker are arranged in an almost perfect triangle, which makes most matches on this map prone to turning into a game of Ring Around the Rosy, with a lot of A-classes zooming around, capturing the silos the enemy just left, trying to eventually outrace the other team. Since Bunker is a very open map with little cover, long range maps like Snipers, Hellfires or the Brawler equipped with the SA Hawkins are best suited to fill support roles. Facility more or less has the same arrangement, with the silos having almost the same distance to each other, but it is a lot less open than Bunker and features a fair share of unique structures. S2 is probably the easiest to defend being located on a hilltop, surrounded by open space and little cover, the perfect playground for suppression mechs. Silo 1 and 3 are less prominent. They are located in spots with lower altitude than the rest of the map. Plus there are several routes that lead to them on different levels, so prepare to be ambushed here. Another map with a triangular arrangement of the silos is Last Eco, this one again doesn't feature too much cover. Unlike Bunker though, the distances here are quite long, which often results in engagements on the way from one silo to the next. The challenge on this map may well be to decide whether intercepting is worth the effort, or if letting one enemy pass and setting off to another silo where your help is needed might be more effective. On all the other maps, the silos are arranged in a straight line namely Bazaar, Frontline, Wreckage and Origin. The most common strategy on those is to concentrate on holding Silo 2, the silo in the middle, because it's easy to quickly jump over to one of the other two silos depending on which one the enemy team tries to capture. Again, distance is the crucial factor. On Frontline and Wreckage, Silo 2 and 3 are quite close so it's the most obvious decision to try and hold those two. Silo 1 lies a bit further away, plus being in a very prominent spot, surrounded by wide open space. Not exactly your easy to defend natural fortress. But this is also its advantage. In a scenario where the enemy team has Silo 2 and 3 under control, it can be a great distraction to capture Silo 1 with a fast mech and then go for silo 3 with a big group, forcing your opponents to spread out, causing them to temporarily let go of S2. On Origin, for example, the distance you have to cover to get from one silo to another is greatly decreased by jump pads, so I prefer to play heavy mechs on this map. 
since thus they don't suffer from their low mobility too much here, and you still get all the advantage in health points. Though be sure to fire a tow or grenade at the jump pad before stepping on it from time to time, because while they're very handy, they're also a perfect spot for predators to place mines, since you can hardly make them out through the glow of the pad. And since a full trap of 8 mines deals 480 damage, any full health mech up to a sharpshooter will just instantly die, as will any mech weakened below this threshold. And even if you don't die immediately, being catapulted into an enemy with little to no health is also a scenario to be avoided. Bazaar, on the other hand, is quite a large map, and even though the silos are not too far away from one another, the distance to either team's base is quite a long one. And this map is actually the single most asymmetrical one, meaning that one team spawns on the side that is very open, which means that enemies will be able to see you coming from afar, if they know what to look for, but it also features a lot of cover in the vicinity of the silos, and multiple routes to approach them. The other team though spawns on the side where almost all routes to the silos emerge from choke points that can be easily spammed with area denial weapons. Still, spawning on the lucky side doesn't mean you automatically win the match. As a matter of fact, every game can of course go either way. And in some matches, mostly the very badly unbalanced ones, it is even possible to suppress the enemy team at their base, not even giving them the opportunity to approach the silos at all. This is achieved by advancing towards the enemy base, up to the farthest you can go without getting shot by the base defenses. Though of course, we all hope for balanced matches at all times, and the thrill of a missile assault game lies in the constant struggle for ground until the last second, when the final missile goes off and everyone's finally able to breathe out again and types GG, good game with glee or fury. So I hope you enjoyed the third part of Hawken Game Modes. As always feel free to add me in game and if you liked this video I would appreciate you leaving a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you on the battlefield.